Hey! <laughs> and look at that, guys. Just like that, we are officially live. It is season two of UK Cowboys TV, and we're coming live. Uh, so every Thursday, 9 p.m., uh, this is where you'll find us, so everyone can get involved, get talking, get joining with us. Uh, and this week, to kick things off, we've got uh two of the the main stars of uk cowboys tv we've got mr paul stewart and mr graham wilson how are we doing guys uh, yeah not too bad mate not too bad a little yeah. bit of a hiccup early on but we're finally brought there in the end yeah 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 we Jim. are live and kicking yeah live and kicking yeah like you say <laughs> we we were supposed to start uh on the dot at nine but like paul said we it, just a, a small snag and we had to try and figure our way around it and uh, as they say we, we managed to find a way to make a square peg fit a round hole as they say yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, also going forward guys just so you know uh, Brian uh, is taking a team as well uh, he'll be on uh, during the season on Mondays uh, where he will do a post game show basically uh, looking at what went right what went wrong living the highs and the lows with everyone um but yes this week we're getting into the news and a bit of camp uh football is back guys how are we feeling about that oh, i'm so happy man <laughs> something to actually talk about something to be excited for yeah, yeah you know very true uh my wife as she turned around and said well that's it i've lost you until christmas now and i'm like well sorry it's football season isn't it you know <laughs> Um, but yeah, we'll get into uh, everything going on. Yeah, at camp. and that's why I'm single. <laughs> oh, mate, don't be like that. We all love you. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, okay, guys, we'll get into some camp talk. Uh, we'll start off first of all uh, looking at some injury updates, um, and I'll get what your opinions are on it all guys uh so first of all injuries we know we've got uh tyron smith out with a with a hammy although he was back at camp today dressed and uh doing some sideline work uh lyle collins same thing car injury but he was on the sideline today uh doing some work uh cam irvin he's still out uh, with an illness uh sean lee that's undisclosed jordan lewis with the knee and a big one that happened today mitch higher got carted off the field uh, with an injury so um anything to add on the injury front guys don't think so mate don't think so i mean it just it, it highlights you know that it's a contact sport and players go down all the time you can do all the stretching in the world but sooner or later somebody's going to come up with an injury or two um Putting it, I mean, looking into the doom and gloom for a minute, you see this all the time in players that hold out of contracts. You know that they they sign their contract, say, or they sign their they sign their tags on week four of the preseason. They come into the first game of the season, not football ready, chucked in at the deep end, and before you know it, they've ripped a hole in their ACL and they're out for the season. So, uh, I think we need to prepare for the fact that there's a lot more players. Um, going to face IR and particularly a, a, a sec, a, like a part of the season now injured. Um, and we don't forget, we got lucky with Zeke Elliott having played the whole season when he had his holdout. So um, yep. just be thankful for that. But there will be players that go down week one of the season because quite simply, they're not ready. You know, they haven't had the, the tackles in pre-season and so on. So um, watch out for the injuries week one, unfortunately. I, I, I go as far to say, like, the first four weeks are going to be a killer. You're going to see some soft tissue injuries going on in the first three, four weeks, without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's going to be... I mean, I, I, I don't want to be doing gloom, but that's yeah. just... It's just it's just what we're going to have to deal with with COVID-19. You know, we all want football. So, if it, whatever way we can get the NFL and the NFLPA to, to talk to each other... Oh, we have to be all for it because let's face it, we don't have much choice. So, 
Yeah, yeah, there is that. I mean, though, of everything, I know, because we've been away uh, for the last three weeks, getting everything ready. Doing that didn't matter anyway, because we still messed up tonight. But we were getting everything ready for season two. Um, so one of the big things we missed during the reporting is, of course, a big injury was uh, the Gerald McCoy injury. I mean... I know. I, I, my missus, she asks me every night when I come home. She's like, oh, how was work? And the only thing I could come up with was Gerald McCoy tore his ACL. And she was like, okay, that has nothing to do with work. I was like, no, I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It sucks. It's such That's a shame. Because, you know, it was one of them things where, um, you know, we all know what it could have been and what could have been. And we just didn't get the chance to see that come off. I think that's the biggest killer. But yeah. in light of that, and I know Paul will like this, and we'll we'll, we'll get into it as we look at, at, at Camp Stars. One of the big things that Paul will uh, like, or not like, because you can't say you like an injury. That, that's the wrong thing. But from that, there's always light at the end of the tunnel. Two players. One, number one, Tristan Hill is developing nicely. And, uh, of course, Paul Stewart's number one guy. <laughs> the Canadian bulldozer. He's uh, developing as well. Um, reports coming out saying he learned a lot in the brief time he had with Gerald McCoy about uh, trusting the process, about um, knowing, you know, listening to the coaches uh, and going through and worth ethic, worth work ethic. Get that out know, in a minute. Um, but what what do you make of the development of the defensive tackles, the younger guys, Paul? Because I know you're the, you're the defensive lineman, yeah. What are you making of it, especially Neville Gallimore? I've been saying it all along about Neville, regardless. I'm telling you, man, he is going to go back <laughs> when it comes to the Cowboys. Like, and not just that, like, like I, I, we were just talking about this before we went live. Mm -hmm. We just saw the new squad photos. I've never seen a player so happy looking in his squad photo <laughs> before, like the Neville Gallimore. Like, honestly, like, he, he just looks so happy just to be part of the Dallas Cowboys. And... And from what everyone's talking about, from Dave Hillman and everybody at the Cowboys headquarters and that, that they're saying he's, he's been really impressive. And to my surprise, Tristan Hill, what the hell? Um, I never thought, I'll be honest, I doubted he was going to make a comeback, but apparently he's definitely stepped up his game and he's definitely, um, what's the word, um, Making people eat a lot of humble cherry pie, like cherry, like humble pie. Humble cherry pie. Like, just eating a humble pie, you know. So like, I don't know. I don't know, mate. I'm just. It's. It's been a long day. You know, it's, it's amazing. But you know what, what I mean. Right? Well, I'm picking up what you're putting it's down. It's amazing what happens to your attitude when. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean. <laughs> You know, uh, the the thing is, is I I I was trying to say this. I I don't know if you remember from season one, like last year, I was saying like defensive tackle especially, you've got to let them develop. Like not every defensive tackle that comes in the first year is an instant you know playmaker, play star. You know, a guy who's relevant and you want uh, on your fantasy team. It doesn't work that with every position. Defensive tackle especially. You know, these are college kids, and all of a sudden they're in a you know a man's game. They, you've got to give them time to develop. You know, and I, I I'll say it every time. Give it three years. Every player, always, no matter what position, give them three years. That will let you know what player yeah. they're going to be. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. It always it always helps though uh, your attitude and your your drive towards getting better when you add yep. Don Terry Poe, Gerald McCoy, Everson. <laughs> you know the list goes on and on and on. And he must have at one point he must have thought, hold on a minute, I better start improving or I'm out the door. <laughs> the, 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 it's as simple that. as that. <laughs> yeah. that, that, that I, find, I, I find that's what he really did need though like, for how like how it just like. All these names that were coming in, he's like, "Crap! I'm pretty much I'm got the back against the door, the back against the wall here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I need, I need, I need to get myself sorted here and make sure I, I perform and like really turn up. And yeah, but based on what everyone's been being reporting, he's been he's been impressing everybody and even Mike McCarthy. So yeah, yeah. 
All right. So what I thought we would do right then, guys, is since we're halfway through camp, we'll look at our camp stars and the guys that um, have stood out and guys who we want a bit more of. And then we'll touch on, as you can see uh, over there, what we got in store on content. So you can see what the last thing's going to be, which is going to be quite controversial. So first of all, I'm going to get from you guys. Give me your top five. Uh, camp stars so far. The first five guys that have stood out for you. Um, I'll start with you, Greg. Go on. Your first five guys. You you can't ignore it. C.D. Lamb. Yeah. You know, C.D. He's come into he's come into a star-studded offense, and um, it wouldn't be the first pitch I've seen where he's making one-handed catches, <laughs> um, touchdown catches. Um, you know, if if his if his attitude continues all the way through the season, we've got a potentially another thousand yard receiver in our hands. Mm -hmm. uh, which I, I'll admit, I I will be absolutely amazed if we get all of them over a thousand yards because, like I like I keep saying continuously, there's only one ball. Um, but if we can get CD Lamb to a thousand yards, ten touchdowns, wow, what a, that would be some draft pick. Absolutely, mm -hmm. so early in his career as well. Um, because he he will face single coverage the whole season, because if you sleep if you sleep on Cooper, he'll burn you. So I'm gonna go straight off the bat, CD Lamb. Honestly, like for it comes to CD Lamb, I'd be more than happy if he even just gets like 600 yards. Like even for as a rookie, that's still pretty good. Yeah, for yeah, a rookie, absolutely. Especially yeah. a wide receiver, like like I was just saying now, like when we were talking about the Tristan Hill thing, giving them time to develop. Wide receivers even more so. Like, their fruition period, if you like, where, you know, they're at their peak, is usually, like, about 28, 29 years of age. Yeah. And, you know, this kid is in his first year. And, like you say, you're going to get... I reckon you'll get more than six or 700 yards out of him, without a doubt. And yeah. here's, here's the sneaky thing that people keep forgetting is how big a target C.D. Lamb is. Sure, he's, he, you know, he's quick, he's efficient, good route runner, doesn't drop a ball, good um, high point in the ball as well. But something that is being, um, that keeps getting overlooked, if you like, uh, that's going under the radar with him, is what sort of target he's going to be in the red zone. He's an extra red zone target. Yeah. And that was a place where the Cowboys failed the most, was in the red zone. And all of a sudden, yeah. you've got Amari Cooper. You can in include uh, Gallup in that as well you know there's a guy who gets overlooked in the red zone i think a lot of the, yeah. the the red zone deficiencies from last year was just bad play calling and then you add cd lamb to the mix in the red zone <laughs> are you going to stop it yeah. do you know what i mean yeah i mean just by power of deduction lamb will see the third cornerback because mm -hmm. you would imagine that cooper will be marked up with your where you're stud basically, and then you have Gallup on the outside. Even if they move Cooper inside, you know it, it depends. You're going to see really quickly whether it's man or zone, because they're not going to let Cooper wander all, all over the field and end up, you know, in in, in the end zone wide open. So, um, yeah, <laughs> get ready for the red zone because it's going to be sweet. <laughs> yeah, I, it still baffles me that how when you look at all the players that we've got and you include Witten you know from last year who's absolute phenomenal in the red zone I know we've wavered off camp a minute but we'll come back to it it still baffles me I think it was sequencing more than anything where they failed but you look at the red zone and you think this team should be one of the most efficient teams in the red zone when you include the weapons that they had last year yeah um, but okay, um, Paul, you give me a next player that has um, that you've seen that that's really burst on or, or impressed you the most at camp so far. I'm gonna head out with it, Alden Smith. Yeah, hell straight yeah. out the bat, straight out the bat. Yeah. For a guy, it's not the for a guy who's not really played a snap in five years to go into camp and just beef so physical like we knew what shape he was before even football started he's been working his butt off yeah but when it comes to get like getting reps at a like one-on-ones against the old line or just doing whatever and like full team drills whatever the fact that he's out there he's performing he's he's 
I think he's more likely the one that's been causing all the injuries to the old lineman at the point. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, but but if oh man, like, I I just hope we we can actually get him like like get him starting. Like I'll be honest, man. Like I'm really in, like enjoying seeing what is coming out of him right now. Yeah, and and even all the coach, all the coaches are praising him. So yeah, definitely for me, Alden Smith has been like for me the number one standout. Uh, Chris, like, don't give me an eye, like, see, like, see the lamb, like, offensively, I, but you know me, I, I love defense, so, but the guys, like, there's other guys that have stood out, but I'll go, get to them later, but for me, number one is Alden Smith. Yeah, Alden Smith for me, yeah, uh, yeah they've, has been... they've looked at, go on, you go, Greg, sorry, mate. They've looked at the, the weaknesses on the defense, and D-Lane was definitely one of them, and they've, they've spent an awful lot of money, and they've, um, they've invited a lot, an awful lot of second chance into, if you know what I mean. And like Paul saying, Alden Smith has grabbed it with two hands and one cleat. You know, he, he um, he has he has every single chance to start. You know, to come in and dislodge somebody that's been there for an awful long time. Mm. Um, the money won't be huge either, which is another yeah. another great incentive. You know, he can. Even if we can get, can you imagine the Cowboys rotating that kind of talent. You know, we went, we went through most of last season going. You know, where's the sack going to come from? Um, Tanks getting, yeah. get, he's getting chipped and double, double covered all the time. You know, and the the effectiveness teams, wasn't yeah. come. Yeah, double teams, and there wasn't any effect anywhere else. But see if we can rotate Crawford, Smith, Tank. You know, it, it's only going to keep them fresh, and. Further down the line, especially once we hit December, that will be huge for a, for a unit not, that that struggled last year. And not to mention, if to bear in mind tomorrow is the deadline for this, is Randy Gregory. We still not heard anything about that, but if we even get him back on that squad, we may actually have the most stacked defensive line unit in the NFL, perhaps. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I see where you're going. I, I personally. By the way, the narrative's gone with him. I think, I don't know. I don't want to say it because I, it sounds like I'm just being negative. But we'll keep our fingers crossed. I'll just say that. I'll just say that. Well, just, just I know I'm kind of going off on the run, but just to put this perspective, August 9th is when he put that last tweet out to that NFLPA agent. It's yeah. now been 18 days later and nothing yet still been happened yet. Mm. So, I don't know, man. I, I, I want to see Gregory get an asset chance because we all know when he's on the field, he's an absolute mayhem. Yeah. When he's on the field, but but uh, yeah, yes, yeah. I don't see it happening. Unfortunately, I we, don't want to. We I talked off here, Paul, about it, and I just go on, Greg. I, I just wonder if they've waited this length of time because he is coming back, and they've waited this length of time in case he screws up, like. For instance, if, if they reinstate him on the 10th and he ends up arrested with a bag full of something on the 11th, <laughs> it makes them have egg on their face. Yeah. So I just wonder if, if they've left it that little bit of length of time. I mean, it's pretty poor if they come out with one hour to go and say, yeah, you're not getting back in. You know, if, if he wasn't, I don't know. It... it, it, it do you know what? See with the league, it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. <laughs> and and it is it, it, it is I mean, the Dallas yeah. Cowboys too. If it's a, if it's gonna happen to a team, it'll yeah. happen to the Cowboys. Yep, that's true. Yeah. Um, everyone hates us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um so here's my one is uh Greg Zerline. Can't argue with the guy. Oh Greg the leg, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah can't Greg, argue with that. He's Greg not, the leg. Not missed one yet. No, and it's not missed uh, one yet. Uh, and as of today, uh, checking on reports, he went six of six with a longest of forty-eight. Um, and really, what yeah. you're looking at is, yeah. the, you know, the short the short field stuff should be automatic. Where a, a, a kicker really is making his money is that forty-yard distance. Um, that seems, you know, yeah. And and he, he's striking them. You know, they they've been building about building, and now. Today he's been doing the forty yarders, and and bear in mind as well. Don't forget, right, that when they were in training camp, um, they don't 
hit regular field goal posts, they're narrower, um, which is obviously done on purpose. So yeah. he, he's hitting. I guess that was, I, that, uh, well, well, well. Just to follow up on that, when you mentioned about the goalpost, that's thanks to Dan Bailey. Like, uh, the, if you took a tour in the Star and Frisco, yeah, yeah, it was Dan Bailey who specifically said, "I want narrower goalposts because it makes it like there shouldn't be no excuses to yeah. hit a wider target a when it comes to, comes to it." Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so. Yeah, yeah for no. that one, the the contract was the telltale that they were going to go with our line. Um, yeah. Thanks, thanks to to Forbath, he came in and took over and was well above average. But yeah, he did a great, great, did a great job for he us. He did a, he did a, a great time. job. But yeah, yeah. Zerloin is Zerloin is talented, and I think we've said on the show that um, last year was a bit of a blip, and the Rams have got cap problems and all that kind of stuff, and they, they've taken advantage and. Um, he's back with his special teams coach who mm. knows him inside out and he's nailing field yeah. goals. So it's looking good. It's looking good. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of good, fam- a lot of good familiar faces for players to kind of like get the best out of them. Mm. And as well, I think another good thing yes, for Greg is the fact that with the Cowboys, he's kicking in a dome. And I think he's he, he is a kicker suited for that sort of because you know kickers some prefer artificial turf some prefer it outdoors some prefer a bit of wind i think for greg he's it's ideal that he's indoors i think he's that type of kicker you know but moving yeah. on to mm-hmm. uh and it'll be nice to have a kicker that can kick field goals and extra points <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and don't forget as well. An important... sorry, sorry, that was a cheap shot. Cheap ah, shot. no, we, I, I, we don't mind it. We know where you're going. <laughs> but I tell you another big thing uh, that I like to add with Greg Zerline is also his kickoffs. You can't forget that part either. He can blast that ball. Mm. Oh yeah. Uh, so mm. that, that's a little underrated factor when it comes into kickers that you've got to take into account but give me your next guy then uh gray who's the next guy on your hit list that you've enjoyed or hearing or reading about or think has impressed so far in camp trevon diggs oh yes trevon diggs uh- just, just to add on top of that, that's, that's who my next player was going to be. So, oh, the two wasn't, yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a Cowboys player making an interception. How refreshing is that? <laughs> well, not just an interception. He's, I mean, had a, it, he's had a pick six. It, in all seriousness, it, you know, see with him and I'll not say his name just in case Paul's got him on his list, but that unit has taken a serious jump. If if we've to project the season on simply training camp, they there are there all of a sudden there are some ball hawks in that unit. Mm. You know, and this is as far as I'm aware, it's Dak Prescott throwing the ball. It's not Andy Dalton, as far as I'm aware, because as far as I know, the run the ones run with the ones. So, um, you know, it's it's not like a backup that's. I mean, these guys are coming up and taking the ball away, um, which, oh, God, it's a breath of fresh air, isn't it? <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, oh, God. Yeah, big time, big time. The, see, overall, the D seems to be on a serious arrow up. Yeah, big time. Um, when you look at camp so far, if you was to turn around and say, like, who's been better off is offense or defense? Defense at the moment in camp are winning it hands down. Yeah. We'll we'll get on to that, but um, yeah, absolutely couldn't agree more. Couldn't yeah. agree more. All right, then, Paul, give me your next uh, camp star. Who's your camp star so far? Well, it was uh, going to be Trevor and Diggs there, but um, <laughs> but, but uh, yeah, it would be an RD lineman. That's uh, uh, Bradley. Eh? Yeah, yeah, having a bit of recent success so far. Yeah, he's turning it up. Big time. Was it three sacks? Three sacks on deck today? 
and a, just a ton of pressure, just absolutely yeah. pressure them. I mean, uh, you know, we, we we'll move on to the O line uh, a bit later when we move on to the negatives. But yeah, he's definitely impressing when he's been given the chance, mate. Do you think though he's going to be rotational piece or just special teams? What do you think? I think he, like the way he's going right now, he can definitely be in rotation for sure. Like he brings a different dynamic. Like obviously, like he's got more speed than the other defensive linemen do, which they have more physical strength. What Ane has, he's just got so like his hand speed is ridiculous. Like if he can like see if you give him in a couple of years' time, like again, like just give him more of that strength level, he could be quite way up there. But but I think the way how he's progressing right now, I think he could definitely be part of the rotation. Like be like a um, a different like a particular series during during the game if we're like crossing away or whatever like for like second down or whatever and that just to get the rotation in depends but but yeah I definitely see Bradley and Ail actually like he'll be involved in the special teams for sure like just to get more game time yeah for sure but I definitely think he will definitely be in the rotation okay yeah absolutely agree with Paul um particularly from today's practice. Uh, they, they talk about flash, you know, uh, special teams players and outsiders have to flash in front of their coaches to, to get anywhere. Uh, just from today's practice, a likelihood of two to three sacks from an A to D. So um, on, on that evidence, absolutely stick them in the rotation because not only do you put another piece in there, it takes it takes reps away from players that can put more in uh, when they do get on the field, so if we can, if we can take Tank off the field for, uh, I don't know, maybe an odd second, an odd second down, and put him back on for third down, um, it's only going to keep him fresh. Yeah. Um, so like the, 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 the way I see it as well, I think uh, how we use Bradley as well could be situational depending who the tackle is in front of him. If he's at, like, see for exact example. If we were to play against the Jets, for example, right against, and you had Mackay Becton, who we saw that photograph of him alongside by one of the wide receivers for the Jets the other day on NFL's post and yeah. stuff like that. It was like Andre the Giant. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Like, there's no, like, so when you've got size and power, lacks the speed perspective. Like, don't give it for a big guy; he can move fast. But when you've got a guy like a knee who can actually use him as an advantage, use him as more of the speed guy yeah. to drive the, the big guy out so that it opens up the field for the do- nose tackles as well. Mm-hmm. So does that does that game plan of ro- rotation play how you rota- rotate plus in out your actual line that, that way. So play play to your strengths pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally with you. Um so we move on to the next guy. I know we mentioned Tristan Hill already. That was gonna be one of my guys. Um so how about my next guy? Like I do I go do you want me to go obvious or under the radar camp star? I think I, I think we'll go obvious for the time being obvious? and leave the, the Okay. Yeah. Alright. I'll I'll do the the next time I wheel round I'll go for somebody who's a little less known. So I'm gonna go with Cheeto. Um, this guy has come on loads. Um, he's actually getting to the ball, hands on the ball, bat in the ball a fair few times as well, where they've been doing um, red zone and goal line drills. Um, Dak has been targeting Blake Jarwin, and a fair few times, um, most of the time, Cheeto is winning that competition and getting the ball away from him batting the ball down. He's had a, an interception as well, uh, which is good to hear. So it sounds like, to me, he could be turning a corner and developing. I don't know what you guys heard from the the, the news out there on uh, Cheeto, but what what are you guys thinking on uh, his development so far? I'll be perfectly honest. I've actually not really heard that much. Um, I, I'll be perfectly honest. Like, I... I keep hearing more about obviously with Trevor and Diggs to be yeah. honest, but but I think that's kind of more disguised in the fact that I've not really heard much about uh, like how che- like Cheeto was actually progressed in that. But um, but yeah, but you know me though, I I, I tend to focus more on the front line type of stuff, so I can't really comment too much. But mm-hmm. I 
don't be surprised if he starts, yep. which for for me would be a huge step on last year. Um, because I don't know about you, you Mike, but I haven't heard a great deal about Jordan Lewis. He's I don't injured. know if he's, he's injured. He's, he's injured. He's injured. Yeah. Well, there you are. There's every opportunity for a woozy to step in, play play alongside Brown, have digs in the rotation as well. Um, but yeah, I, I I've I've always been a supporter of a woozy. I think he's I think he's got talent there, and it, it's almost as if the they're allow they're allowing him to play the way he wants to play now. Uh, I've I've seen more than one report say. They're just letting him be who he wants to be, as opposed to turning him into a particular type of zone or man or whatever it was. Um, not too clued up on the, the whole protection type thing, but um, they're they're allowing him to be what he wants to be. And I mean, you can't chart it any more than interceptions because that's that's effectively what they're there for. They're there for turnovers. You can bat a ball down all day, but it's turnovers that help win games. Yeah, yeah, and I, that was something that was on the air, uh, you know, that even, um, you know, all the coaches were talking about when they came in. The, there was an emphasis on turnovers for the defense. So um, yeah. I, I'm hoping this Dallas defense does come on. I mean, I've taken them in my fantasy draft uh, for defense. Um, but yeah. it's it's uh, everything's pointing up. Everything is pointing up with them. But give me your next guy then, Gray. We're wheeling back around. Who's the next guy on your list? Um, it's it it's it now it now starts to to muddy a little bit because you know you expect from Coop, you expect from Zeke and all that kind of stuff. We have got a star-studded offense, so um, I mean, could you go with Everson Griffin? You know, he's 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 come in, he's come into the fold fairly late, and it wouldn't be the first time I've I've seen him destroy a tackling dummy. You know, yeah. he, he looks hungry enough. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I don't know if you guys have seen the, the video on NFL Network, but he rips into this tackling dummy as a, hello, I'm back. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure I'm sure Mike McCarthy will love to have him on his team rather than face him as a Viking, like he has done in the past. So um... I, I, I think it's safe to say he's had, he's had enough of him for over the years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. But they seem to be, they seem to be filling holes with good talent and reasonable money. You know, they're not spending stupid amounts of money on anybody. They're they're not giving away draft picks to get these guys in. They're they're literally just waiting for the contract to to work itself out. They're not dealing out uh, the big dollars like they used to, which is great, I think, as well. I just thought I'd throw that in there. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. Mm-hmm. All right, give me your next guy, Paul. Um, okay, I I'm kind of tempted to go offense this time, but I think I will save that one to last. But the next one I'm gonna say is what it is fucking uh, Darian Thompson. Ah, yeah. Um, who is now because he looks as though he might be pushing Haha Clinton Dix out of the starting role. With the, the way, haha. Ha, apart from today, um, but yeah, I know what you're saying. Recently, haha ha has been way off the radar, and there's even people commenting how quiet he is. So, what what is it with yeah. Darren Thompson that's impressing you so far? Seems to be doing. All, it just seems to be doing all the basics correctly now. Mm-hmm. Like, in terms of like, so get, get into the right position, hitting the right, like, just making sure that. She's literally just doing his job, pretty much. Like, I, like, I don't know. Like, secrets. I'm again. I'm more of a defensive lineman, like type of guy. But when it comes to, like, but for what a corner or safety, that as long as they're in the right coverage, they're reading the plays right and getting into the right positions and not uh, leaving um, enough gap space for any, like, in case like a runner or a right receiver has enough room to kind of cut inside or cut outside, whatever. As long as they can close the gap on him, and he seems to be doing all that right now. Yeah, yeah, I like it. All right, well, here's one for you that's going slightly under the radar, um, but I've read and heard it uh, quite a few times now. Is a guy with all the O line issues we're having who's standing out is Adam Redman. 
Um, he's actually quietly getting it done. Believe it or not. Yeah, yeah. This, yeah, Dave Hellman's uh, reported about that a few times. Like yeah. Adam Redmond, Adam Redmond. So, but yeah. It's a, it's a cheeky one. I mean, he's literally at a time when we're struggling because, you know, we as we reported earlier in the show with the injuries, he's, and, and you know, the O-line, we're really struggling in depth, uh, especially our quality depth, if you like. Um, yeah. And, and, yeah. Yeah. And this season, I think more than anything is going to test teams' depths um, with everything that goes on. Adam Redman seems to be that little candle in the wind if you like who's managing to keep things together there and going okay there's something here um and that that guy he's just standing out at the moment he, he protection is slipping anyway um but that's right across the board interior and uh on the bookends so i adam redmond at the moment is seems to be the guy who's just managing to find a way to get it done um so that's my little under the radar guy but jamie uh jamie Jamie isn't even here. <laughs> what the hell was that about? Jamie isn't even here. Graham, give me your next guy, mate. Let's face it, Jamie's always here. He's Come always on. here, yeah. He's always, yeah, always, he's always here. That's true. That's true. Uh, our northern boy. Right, okay. Love um, I'm just, uh, do you know what? But this one, I'm just going to highlight a little, a little scenario. Um, today, Tony Pollard ran for a 40 yard touchdown. Mm-hmm. With only ten defensive players on the pitch, mm-hmm. so somebody got chewed out for that one, um, and I just thought I just thought I'd bring that one up because um, regular listeners to the show, when we did running backs, I I don't think I was critical of Tony Pollard. I just wanted to highlight the lack of opportunity that he's going to get with three stud receivers with Zeke Elliott. Not to mention Blake Jarwin. I just wondered how much of the ball Tony Pollard was going to see. But let's face it, if you can rumble for a 40-yard touchdown, uh, you might see more of the ball. So I just wanted to throw Tony Pollard out there because he is Zeke's backup, and you never know. We might see him. Um, Just just wanted to give him a a, a prop for that because uh, I don't think I was harsh on him. I just wanted to, to highlight... You know, in a star-studded offense, um, how often are we going to see Tony Pollard? But we definitely saw him at practice today. Yeah, I like it. All right, Paul, give me your next guy. Okay, so I promised I was going to go offense this time, so I'm going to do that. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty obvious. I think with the big contract he got uh, before the season, uh, before camp started, yeah. late Jarwin. Yeah. Yeah. Like he's he, he's definitely like he's he's just continued to like he's because he's now getting the opportunities because obviously with without Cap well, Jason Witten no longer with us anymore mm-hmm. Blake's now now getting those full of opportunities and it's and it's showing that now like today he he, he caught a forty yard game uh, and team drills to put the offense in the red zone um he's he's just showing his vertical abilities. Um, a lot more. So, what like, even comes to like deep threats and slat, uh, even slat, like 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 short pass routes. Yeah, it it it, 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 it just becomes an hard target for Dak. And and what more can we want? Like this this is what we keep talking about. We've got the trio. We've got CD. We've got Michael Gallup, and yeah. we've got Amari. Now that you add uh, Blake Jarrett, and don't forget our friend uh, Shannon Gross. Mm. Mention said he wants he, he'll think it like I know it's a bit of to me I think he's just been so exaggerating but he thinks he'll go for a thousand yards as well yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know uh, but but uh, but the way how things are going right now when it comes to our like our like our, our skill players in terms of tight ends and wide receivers and that that they're, they're turning it up they really are turning it up yeah. No, they they have stepped it up lately, um, and there's a video I, I I or a photo I think that I shared uh, a couple of days ago, and it's it's Blake Jarwin catching the ball, toe tapping like right on the line, and even they, they awarded him the touchdown, and a hell of a play, athletic, high pointing, bringing the ball down, knowing instinctively where to be and where his feet was, tap both feet down it was an impressive play um but you know this is stuff that we we saw do you know what i mean 
And yeah. just to add on top of that, and uh, our our friend uh, uh, Cowboy Dale, yeah, uh, thinks he's going to be the fantasy dra- fantasy pick that everyone's going to sleep on, and I totally agree. I yeah. agree with that one hundred percent. I think he will be one of one of those tight ends. that's going to be really high score when it comes to fantasy football now. Yeah, you wonder if you see Blake Jarwin as the tree that's been growing in Jason Witten's shadow. And now that the yeah. shadow's gone, does the tree blossom and all that kind of stuff? <laughs> Hopefully it does. You know? Uh, <laughs> I mean, he's got a brand new contract, so let's see it. You know, if he can if he can turn it up. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Well, so, so, but yeah, but so far, since he signed the contract, he's, he's it's, it's getting, what I can't even say, it's like it, it, the expectations are getting met from the coaches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, and I'll go with my last guy. Now, I was going to say uh, Jalen Smith because um, he's um, been getting it done, believe it or not, rather than doing this whole um, freelancing, if you like, which is what he did last year. You know, he seems to be yeah. doing it, what he's been told. He's doing his coverage. So that, I think, is what's going to spur him on this year is rather than doing this sort of freelancing that he was doing actually sticking to his assignment doing that which is no, fine he was, he, was jo- he was doing two jobs pretty much last and, season and that too yeah 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 um but i'm gonna go for so many people just keep overlooking and not because like he's doing amazing but i'm gonna say dak prescott purely because at the moment he's showing that with all the issues going on and all, all, all the trouble and what have you he's just being a, a professional about it and going into work yeah practicing doing what he needs to do not complaining not causing a fuss trying to keep it all together bear in mind like there's a lot going on this year that's distracting and he's just keeping it and just yeah. practicing doing his job and doing exactly like people will say oh he's thrown another interception again and all of this you can bear in mind a it's practice b there's a lot of distraction going on and c yeah they're trying to he's trying to do the best he can in a situation that's very very difficult you know camp this yeah. year is just yeah. a totally different beast uh, than what it is from other years i'm not just that it's the it's the media obligations for be, being the quarterback it's the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the media obligation being the quarterback for the dallas care it just comes comes with so much pressure anyway yeah and not just that it's like it's like you just said there like with the whole, whole contract agreement stuff and like uh and thank God he got rid of that bloody agent. Thank God. Because that, to me, he was the biggest problem with the whole lot. It wasn't so much pressure because just, like, if anyone doesn't know, like, and correct me if I'm wrong here, boys, the player doesn't actually negotiate the contract. It's the yeah. agent that does it. Yeah. Regardless. Yeah. Then, then, either so, then, so, then, so, go on. Sorry. So, if anyone was being greedy, it was the bloody agent. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, I'm under, sure. under the rules. The, the, the team cannot talk to Dak about his contract. They're not allowed to. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. That's some amount of power given to somebody that's never played the game before. Mm. You know, but just to, just to, to go back on what we're saying about Dak, we, we've mentioned um, interceptions from Diggs, from Awuzi and so on. Mm-hmm. Dak will be yep. testing his receivers right now. So he'll be, he'll be stretching the ball a little yep. bit more. He'll be He'll be going for the deeper ball. Can he do this? Will he cut back if I do this? Can I stretch him a little bit more? He'll be finding out what he has, you know. Because if if he mm-hmm. throws if he throws darts every time and it's you know it gets to the the safe passes and all that kind of stuff, th- he won't learn. He won't learn about his guys. His guys won't be pushed that little bit more. Far easier to throw an interception at the the star. When it doesn't really matter, don't be throwing the interceptions against the Eagles, obviously, but make your mistakes now. And he's only he's only just finding out about his guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and that's it. Like people take the whole aspect what when you make mistakes at training at the training camp and practice and stuff like that as a absolute negative. Listen, like if you make a mistake, the whole point is next play, don't do it again. That's the whole mentality when it comes to playing football. If you made a mistake. Like depending on what type of player you're at, like sometimes you would get you get dropped and someone will take your place. Then you get the opportunity to go back in. And then you know it's like I I can't make this mistake again. They will learn from that. They'll progress and become a better player for it. 
Yeah, that's just that's how that's, yeah. how, that's the whole mentality when it comes to football. And it's from my understanding, it's not the exact playbook as last year. Oh, there will oh, be Michael no, Carthy no, tweaks no, in there. No, so. no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, different, completely different. different. Uh, and v- different verbiage, different um, calls, yeah. different signs. Bear in mind, different this snap, is... Don't, don't forget the snap count is going to be different. Is mm-hmm. Everything will be different, you know. I know it's still Callum Moore, but Callum Moore's got to implement what McCarthy wants McCarthy him to wants. do. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll briefly move on to some recent successes that have happened. Um, so you've had Haha Clinton Dix, who has stepped it up a little bit today. Um making some plays. Uh, Bradley and I, as you've already uh, mentioned, Paul, he's been coming on. Dalton Schultz, yep. believe it or not, has been making plays. Um, That's the other one. That's the other one. You can't forget him. Uh, and we're talking about how bad the Cowboys were in the red zone last year and at the goal line. Here's a guy that if you're going 12-man personnel and if, if he's coming along nicely, there's another target. There is another place you've got to look. Um, yep. So if he is coming on, which he is at camp, which they're mentioning, um, well, <laughs> there you go. You know, Team Forty Burgers just taking another tick. So uh, yeah, there's that. And of course, without uh, we can't go any further without saying another guy who's coming along nicely is Neville Gallimore. Um, so he's been getting it done as well. Yeah, we know you like that one. And then uh, I just want to make a note of some guys who are, are quietly getting it done. So they are doing what they're supposed to be doing, just basically doing their job. Um, not huge reports coming out, but they're getting it done. So that's uh, a, at the moment, mind you, this is great, is two wide receivers. Uh, so you've got Cedric Wilson and Brown, both uh, battling for that fourth wide receiver spot. Um, but it's really who's going to be fourth, who's going to be fifth. I think it's going to be Cedric Wilson and then Brown is going to be the fifth wide receiver, but used on special teams. Those pitchers both quietly getting it done. Um, so that's great. Francis Bernard, he was quietly getting it done to begin with. He seems to have gone off the boil lately. Um, I don't know if it's just he's not getting chances or reps. I don't know, but... I, he's definitely a different type of linebacker that we already currently have. He's yes. definitely more of a coverage. He's, he's definitely a coverage type of linebacker. Yeah. Oh, for, yeah. For sure. I agree with you on that one. And then another guy as well, another rookie, is Reggie Robinson. He's been quietly yeah. getting it done, just plodding along nicely. Um, and that's great news to hear. So uh, we want more guys. So let's move on to we want more so we can get on to our final subject which is going to be controversial. Um, we want more. So, Graham, who do you want or what do you want to see more in the second half of camp? I want yep. more consistency on offensive line. Mm, offensive you know, I, 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 want, I want them to go with a five our, our, our tackle situation worries me no end um, I want I want more consistency I want reps for um, Smith and Collins mm-hmm. Dak <laughs> I mean they won't be saying that out loud in the press there's a there's a photo in DallasCowboys.com and the uh, <laughs> <laughs> the two DNs are about a foot and a half away from Dak, and you can see them both. They've beaten their they've beaten their man, and it's a question of who gets the Dak first. <laughs> um, if there's one thing that's gonna uh, be the fly in the ointment of this offense, it's gonna be that offensive line. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's. I mean, already we've seen Smith go down with a with an injury. <laughs> uh, it. I mean, Rich, will, Rich will, he'll, he'll hear me. You know, he'll, he doesn't even have to watch this. He'll know exactly what I'm going to say. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a worry. It's a worry. I mean, the good news is, the positive news, if you like, uh, about that is both Tyron and uh, Lyle were both at practice today. They uh, did some team and individual they were. drills. Yeah. yeah, they were. Yeah, so yeah. That, that's some positive um, news coming out. Um, the coaching staff has said as well that Tyrone will be ready to go week one. Um, 
or is it Lyell? Lyell's ready to go week one. Tyrone was still waiting on some news uh, on that situation. So that that's some positive news. It's, it's a step in the right direction. It is, but all yeah. the off season with with uh, me in particular, I, I've claimed he's not a sixteen game player anymore, and we haven't. Yeah, I, even think, I think we all we all I think we all agree on that one. Yeah. Like, I, I think we'll be very lucky if we even get 16. It's very lucky. Mm, yeah. All right. Um, give me then, Paul, while you're on the line then uh, and you're talking, who do you want to see more of? Um, well, I kind of want to extend uh, what Graham's saying about the O-line there uh, as well. Like, I just kind of feel as though we do need more of that consistency. And, yeah. And... And obviously, with the guys that have just came into the team, like like Tyler Bayadish, how do you pronounce it? Like he has done a good job, but but as you know, but when you when you like, it was the same when Connor Williams just came into the league. He was very undersized in comparison to the rest of the line. It like, yeah. just needs to add more weight. Like the technical ability can be there, but it just needs to add more weight. And he's doing the right things, but yes, that will get him forced back and and it's given Dak that a uh, pressure. But if I, if, I, if I want to see anything more, I want to actually, and I'm, I'm going to say it, I want to see more Tristan Hill. I'm going to say it. I like it. I like it. See more and get and get that defensive title, especially three tech like, solidified. I wanted, like, like I, I, I really want to eat that humble pie because I criticized him really, really badly last year. <laughs> and if he can come back and just tear it up, yeah. I'll, I'll eat that humble pie, whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, I actually don't like you. I actually give that option. I might just choose the pie myself just to put me in the safe side. But yeah. Uh, yeah, so. And then I think for me, coming into the second half of camp, uh, it's going to be safety play. Just want to see those safety step it up. If we see that. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Go on, sorry. No, that, that's a good point actually. Because like we're, we're hearing quite a lot with with Degs and like a uh, Chido, uh, like Chido, Chido and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. Like, but we're not really like we are hearing much about like like Darren Thompson, but it's mm-hmm. very quiet. And yeah, it's kind of like taking like that potential starting role from Ha right now. Yeah, but but we're not hearing big plays or anything. Like we're just hearing like they're doing the right things mm-hmm. type of thing. There's no been any like key plays. It's been. Oh, like he made a great tackle. He made a, like he made the wide receiver drop the ball, and like, like or it was a pick six or whatever. We're not really hearing anything in regards to that. So, just we just need, like you said, we just need something more to elevate this the safeties as well. Yeah, I, at the moment, the way I see it is the weakness of this team still, <laughs> after many, many, many years, uh, the weakness of this team is still the safeties. <laughs> I can see where you're leading on to this now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, let's move on then uh, and wrap up the show because uh, this could take a while. As you can see in our content, the next bit is the Earl. The Earl of Thomas. <sighs> yeah, now, that's this... a... <laughs> Go on, Paul. Go on. Because Chris, we were just talking about safeties and I just knew how we were... It was just how we broke into that next topic there. I just knew it. Yeah, it's a nice little segue, mate. It's all yeah. about segues. Um, now, I don't know about you. There's a lot of controversy on this subject. It, Whichever yeah. way you go, right, whether you say yes, sign him or no, sign him, you're wrong. <laughs> and it's just one of them things where we just, it's in, it's inescapable, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Like, explain that to me, though. Like, what do you mean by that? That, that it's so split down the middle with Cowboys fans that if you say, yes, we should sign Earl Thomas, like half of Cowboys Nation will be like, no, you're mad. Oh, right, right, right. Okay, like people are just being, they're not uh, being logical in their thought decision and there's people that just like, actually are saying no because of X, Y, Z. Yeah, just yeah. The, 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 decision, yeah, okay. the decision between the fans is split. Not just the fans, even like reporters. Reporters are completely split on it. You ask, you got to, you know, in Cowboys, um, DallasCowboys.com, half of the, the staff there will go, I think we should sign Earl Thomas. The other half are going to turn around and go, uh-uh. 
See, I'm 50 50. Well, yeah. I'm even splitting my decision. Exactly. But I'm thinking, uh, but. I mean. Because the reason I'm saying that is because if we do have, like, the reason I'm saying that is, like, if we do have Earl Thomas in the team, yes, it's going to make a big, huge difference uh -huh. in terms of filling up that, that position of speed safety. But at the same time, it's. Is he just going to be there for selling jerseys or be there for a media gimmer? Because that's all I can see it really being, more than anything. Like, like I know it sounds a bit, you know, because you know it, it's more of a, a, a money thing. I don't know. know. I don't know. I don't think it's the money thing. I think what the issue is is like you you'd have to go all the way back to um, the golden era of Dallas Cowboys to say when we last had. A, a a top safety, a top rated safety. That's a long, long time ago. Um, and since then, it's just been sort of just trying to fiddle around and plug and play and see what we can do. And we're still here, right? And I think the, the way, the, the, what the Cowboys are trying to do is weigh up the option is, is Earl a top 10 safety? And if he is, is he worth what the trouble brings to um, to that locker room? Because bear in mind, we've we, it, we, it's only it's only very very recently. Don't forget, it was only recently we were in this situation, and we were in this situation with Greg Hardy, and we're still feeling the echo of that now. That Greg Hardy, when he was on the Cowboys defense, you could argue he was the best defensive player on our team, but he brought the locker room issues with him. Is Earl Thomas just volume two of that problem? Not to that extent, I don't think. Maybe not to not that to extent, that. yeah. Uh, but you sim sim what I'm trying to say is it's a similar sort of situation, you know? Like, it's, it's kind of weird, though. Like, this kind of goes back to that particular game when Earl Thomas was still playing for Seattle. Mm -hmm. It goes to the Dallas side. It goes to the Miller <laughs> Light Club section where you go through and starts like talking to Jason Witten at just outside the Cowboys locker room, like that. Come and get me, come and get me. Like, I'm sorry, but he had an opportunity to sing for us. He had the opportunity last year, right? Mm -hmm. right? And and he chose for the bigger money. That to me, like, I'm sorry, but I'm all about sticking by your word type of thing. And this is this is the sign of me, like this is the sign of me I don't want to sign him because he turned us down before. Like I, I'm just, whole, I've got a bad grudge yeah. about it. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, 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 I'm sorry, Earl. You've had your chance. You can royally go away. I, I'm not <laughs> going to swear this because it's life, but, <laughs> but, but that's the, that. That to me really, it really annoyed me because he's like, "Come and get me." I'm a Cowboys fan. Blah 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 blah. But he ends up going for going to Baltimore. Like, yeah. don't get don't get me wrong. Baltimore had a great season. Don't get me wrong. Earl still played played ball, did well. Uh, but but I, nah, I'm sorry. I would I would sign him because of that. Go on, Gray. You take. You, you say, Just... you say, Cowboys Nation is is fifty fifty. I couldn't be, I couldn't be more against this deal. Couldn't be more against it. There are so many factors. Yeah. And I'm going to try and run down the list off off the top of my head. Do you want a player that gave a middle finger to his own bench? Mm. No, because nope. that's what that's nope. exactly what he did. Do you want a player that says he wants to sign for you, but really was only interested in the money? No. Uh, to me, to me, it's more. Oh, oh sorry. I, sorry, John, Graham, I, To me, the. Oh, on you go. Sorry, on you go. On you go, mate. Sorry. No, on you go. <laughs> Go I on, was go. just going to say, like, to me, what Earl Thomas did to us, it was more to boost his pay. It was boost to boost his pay grade. But sorry, that was it. Yeah, I mean, he, the, the the video, he he approached the Dallas locker room in a Seahawks jersey. Mm. How disrespectful mm. is that? Yeah, to the Seahawks to me, fans especially. To me, John Harbaugh is not the head coach to give up talent. Um. Paul and I were talking off air John, before John. we before we came. John, um, not John Har. John, John. Yeah, Harbaugh. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
Paul and I were talking off air. This this punch it was initiated on the practice field, as far as we're aware. How yeah. many punches get thrown up and down the league? Oh yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And this this one's been highlighted. This one's been highlighted simply because they cut them, they got rid of them, didn't even try to trade them. Right? They've given up all that all that dead money in the cap. Right. They're not going to get rid of him if he's a top talent. They, I think they've, I think they've seen an opportunity because one, John Harbour doesn't give up talent. He's, he had such a big deal. Um, as as far as I'm aware, his agent's phone isn't off the hook. You know, like why why hasn't there been so many phone calls from other teams? Yeah, this was going to um, be my. I just, point. I, I, I don't see why. I don't see why the the Ravens would give up talent in the middle of um, in the middle of preseason when they don't know their. They, they, let's face it; nobody knows who their strongest starters are right now. They're, it's going to take a little bit more time to work that out. Mm-hmm. So I don't see why the Ravens would give up a talented player. I mean, is it is it the stage where he's he's lost a step? Mm-hmm. I don't. I, I, I can't see why they would give up a talent like that for one for one punch. I mean, if he if he'd gone into the guys if he'd gone to the guys' locker room or if he'd gone to the guys' room at night and knocked <laughs> out two front teeth or whatever like that. But this was on the practice field. Like Paul will tell you, you you have your scuff. Ten minutes later, you, you'd forgotten what the scuff was all about. Yeah, yeah. There's, yeah. There's so much <laughs> It, it's the football mentality. Like it's, it's, it's what you just kind of said there. It's like, so it's been times where when I've played like in the UK leagues and I've wanted to like batter the living crap out of my, one of my teammates because they put me such a downer. Like they keep getting it. Like kept, I keep getting blocked or uh, when I played O line, I kept getting bull rushed or whatever and that. And it got to the point I just couldn't take it anymore. And I tried go for them just to like let out the the frustration out pretty much. But, but within 10 minutes, you're perfectly fine. You hug it out, you're perfectly fine. But this, it, there's a lot, there's definitely a lot more to it. If that's like, from based on what the reports are saying, there's something that's not being mentioned here, my personal opinion. Well, I mean, like, what you got to look at is yeah. one of the points Graham was making that you, you kind of jumped, uh, jumped the gun on one of the points I had was num- the first one is that the Reigns have got to chew up dead money on this, right? Are on how yeah, to release. Yeah. and what you got to remember is they are frugal with the the uh, cap room. They they've always been that way, and they'll sign. They they they're one of the main teams that will go out and sign their players early to get the best deal on the contract for their players. They do it all the time, and yet suddenly yeah, uh, they've, they've just always been. Yeah. Uh, well, well, what's the best? What's the best? What's the best one for them? Tight, like tight fisted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just try and get the, the, the best deal all the time. They do it, and then for this team to cut them, and before they cut him, they had like the leadership committee come in and say, like, look, this is the, we we got an issue here. What do you think? And apparently, the leadership committee, when they were all talking, were all hands down, just like, yeah, cut him. It was just that simple and then instantly he was gone and then like graham was saying since he's gone it's not like 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 people are saying oh yeah we got to sign him we got to sign him like i actually think that by not signing him right now i think the cowboys have been very clever jerry's been quite clever that nobody's signing him so there's obviously an issue somewhere because teams aren't going out to get this supposed star safety but what if the cowboys are just doing a bit of due diligence here and going just wait let's see what happens because if you get him cheap enough because nobody will sign him why not yeah yeah there's too many red flags too many red flags for me is the issue is the issue if he was it if he was a serious talent for a Baltimore Ravens team that always has a top-ranked defense, that's they live off defense and they run the ball and they have serviceable wide receivers. You would not jeopardize the cornerstone of your team on the eve of the season yeah. if 
you had good reason to like the there's I, I think it comes down to a serious drop in talent. And they've 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 seen the punch and they thought here's an opportunity because they've again they've ate all that dead money. Nobody came in with a trade offer. You see you see punches on the field all the time. There's much more to this than the Ravens are letting on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I don't think we'll fully know the full story about what the, no. the punch or the fight is. I, there's more yeah, to absolutely. it and, and why they... Don't, Go on, Paul. Don't, don't, forget, don't forget, he actually got into an altercation with a defensive lineman last year as well, mm-hmm. Brandon Williams. And, and don't forget as well that there was an issue with Earl with his wife in the off-season where she, she, mm-hmm. she pulled, a gun out, pulled a gun out on him. You know, so mm-hmm. I know that yeah. that you could turn around and say, you know, that wasn't Earl's fault, but they're the sort of things that the league look at and go, Ooh, really? What? But, but the yeah. thing is, even though it might not be his fault, but that stuff can still play a mental part in that's, that player's mind. That's what I mean. Yeah, you know, they're the sort of things that 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 make they not, think... like, the, the, like they'll, they'll be at practice, but they're not actually at practice. Hmm. Like, because that's still in the, that, that could be in the, still in the back of our minds saying, yeah. "Oh, I don't want to go home." Blah blah blah, blah and, and it affects their performance. So yeah. there's that aspect of it as well. Yeah. And just to add another financial aspect to it, some of the listeners might not know, but the Cowboys restructured Tyron Smith's contract, so there is cap room mm. for this season. It's not like they're having to to jig and, and move things around and and you know to get an Errol Thomas contract in there. They're, is cap space, yeah, so yeah. that's that's not an issue. Yeah. So something I else. Think they're is... to, I think they're trying to do that for Dak. If I'm being perfectly honest. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. That, so that the, would be one. No. Uh, the... And not, not to mention as well, there was the injury concern. Like, obviously, we were talking about, like, so when Earl Thomas gave the middle finger to the sideline, that was when the 